Hello, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Brotherhood of the Wolf, a 2001 French movie. Its primary genre would be kind of hard to classify definitively, as it includes elements of horror and suspense, as well as action kung fu movie elements, with all that happening in a historical period piece that's loosely based on an actual event. So it's got a lot going on. I'll be reviewing some of the movie's major highlights and making the case for why, if you have not seen it, you're really missing out. Side note, while this video is not completely spoiler-free, I do leave out most major plot points and revelations so as not to ruin things for those who have yet to see it. There actually was a Beast of Gévaudan. By the way, quick disclaimer, throughout this video, I will be butchering some French words every now and again. I'd rather not speak any French at all, as I find it kind of a silly and feminine language. But it's hard to do a review on a movie called Les Pactes des Loups without throwing in at least a little French. I, I took French in ninth grade, and it did not go well. So, The Beast of Gévaudan historically was a real wolf-like creature that prowled the... Auvergne and South Dordogne regions of France during the years 1764 to 1767, killing about 100 people, often in bizarre circumstances. Furthermore, all of the primary cast of this movie, except for the Native American Mani, actually existed and lived during the reign of King Louis XV. There was an incident similar to the one in the movie where official hunters dispatched by the king of France shot a wolf, claimed a victory over the fabled beast, and then high hoed back to Paris. Meanwhile, the attacks continued for another two years. Finally, a local farmer named Jean Chastel ostensibly killed the actual beast. Notably, the attacks on people appeared to stop following this event, so it seems like he actually did what he claimed. The movie does include a character of the same name, Jean Chastel. They portray him as an old healer who is part of the Brotherhood's conspiracy, serving as keeper and caregiver for the massive beast. Now, here's something that I bet a lot of you can agree with. Subtitles suck, especially action movies with subtitles. They force you into a crappy trade-off in a lot of instances. You can either follow the dialogue and you miss a lot of the sweet moves and explosions happening on screen, or you can follow the action and have little to no idea what the hell is happening in the plot. And I say this as an avid reader. I read for fun and pleasure all the time. I read quickly and well, and most likely a lot more than you do. As a reader, I still say subtitles suck balls. Even when it comes to genres like anime, personally, I won't watch it until the dub version is available. Now, all this being said, I will make this recommendation. Avoid the English dub version of Brotherhood of the Wolf. It is possible to track down a dubbed version, maybe on torrent sites or buying that version in DVD form from like Amazon or eBay or something, but really it's just not the same. And this opinion of mine is well supported by damn near everyone if you read the reviews. The dub version just somehow robs the movie of something essential. So my advice, get the original, tolerate the subtitles, tolerate the silly effeminate French noises emanating from your TV. It actually does somehow make for a better experience. Brotherhood of the Wolf is a really unusual, unexpected, and unique movie. The three U's, unusual, unexpected, unique. I'm going to trademark that or something. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. I saw the previews for it on TV when it originally was released in the United States, and it looked just so damn cool. I felt absolutely compelled to catch it in the theater as soon as it opened. Apparently, a lot of other people in the U.S. felt the same because it did really, really well. Universal Pictures paid $2 million for the rights to distribute this movie in the United States, and it went on to gross $11.2 million in limited theatrical release, making it the sixth highest grossing French language movie of all time in the United States. It further went on to absolutely clean up in DVD sales once further word of mouth got around about it. 
A uh, real quick reminder, like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And now back to the countdown. Even those critical of Brotherhood of the Wolf tend to, at the very least, have effusive praise for the visuals. The setting in rural France looks absolutely beautiful. The amazing direction. These combine to make it a very visually stunning movie. All that being said, director Christophe Gans really, really, really loves his slow motion. More so than any other movie I can think of. More than John Woo in Mission Impossible 2. More than Zack Snyder in the Justice League Snyder Cut. In some scenes, it works really well, yes. But the director lays it on so thick that it really kind of takes you out of the movie sometimes. And that's really my only complaint about the direction, which is otherwise fantastic. I first came upon Mark DeCascos in 1993's Only the Strong. I was pretty young when I saw it, so it still retains that childhood nostalgia factor. The plot is an ex-Green Beret, air quotes, makes a difference with a bunch of street kids, by teaching them the Brazilian dance martial art of capoeira. In fact, I like that movie so much that I was actually able to forgive the Cascos for being in that awful Double Dragon movie that came out a year later. And yes, that is Party of Five Scott Wolf in a martial arts action movie. It did not go well. After that, I'd notice DeCascos popping up every now and again in bit parts in various movies, various character actor type roles on TV shows. In 2004, he struck gold by assuming the role of the chairman in Iron Chef America. If you're too young to remember or have noticed at that time, that show was huge for a while. Most recently, you'll have likely seen him in John Wick 3. So, long story short, he's an accomplished martial artist, a decent actor who's been steadily getting roles since 1989. As mentioned earlier, in The Brotherhood of the Wolf, his role was completely fabricated, making him really the sole exception of the primary cast. I guess the scriptwriter thought it'd be cool to have a Native American Kung Fu ninja inserted into the story to kind of shake things up a bit. And he was right. Within the story, Mani plays the role of manservant to Franzak, at least whenever they are in polite society. But you eventually learn that the two are blood brothers, and Franzak is quick to defend any slights or insults to his brother from another mother. His character, Mani, is a textbook example of the noble savage TV trope. Other examples for reference purposes include Morgan Freeman as Azim in Robin Hood, also Tonto from the Lone Ranger movies, and Chewbacca from Star Wars. To prepare for this role, DeCascos learned how to ride a horse, studied Mohawk Indian culture, and became fluent in French. Gregor de Franzac is the main protagonist. I guess if I was French, I'd recognize the actor from some other stuff, but I'm not, so I don't. Franzak is in the employ of the French crown, serving as a naturalist and taxidermist. That makes him sound kind of nerdy, but Franzak actually serves more as a cryptozoologist and a detective, hunting down mysterious legends and creatures. He's a likable main character, doing a good job throughout the movie. The two main things that stand out to me about the character of Franzak, number one, he's a real pussy hound. He's smooth with the ladies. He seems unwilling or unable to let a pretty girl be in the same room with him without making a pass. He hangs out in whorehouses for fun. Basically, he's like a French Age of Enlightenment era James Bond. The second thing about him is this. Throughout nearly the entire movie, Franzak hangs back and lets Mani make with the fisty cuffs and the brawling of which there is plenty. Franzak, he's certainly no slouch, showing himself in the movie to be a man of action, a masterful hunter and tracker, skilled with firearms, but Mani does all the fighting. That is until the end. The bad guys, the so-called Brotherhood of the Wolf, make the fatal mistake of pissing Franzak off. The last half hour of the movie has Franzak absolutely destroying dozens upon dozens of bad guys. I thought this was a really cool dynamic where Franzak is a representative of the king, a chevalier, which is French for knight of the realm. He's a gentleman, 
up until he's not. Holy freaking shit, Monica Bellucci is a good looking woman. She's got that Diane Lane quality where she was fine as hell in her 20s, but actually gets hotter as she ages into her 30s and 40s. You probably know her from the second Matrix movie playing Persephone, or more recently as a Bond girl in 2015 Spectre. Side note on that, she would have been right about 50 years old at the time of Spectre's shooting, making her the oldest Bond girl in the history of the franchise. And damn, she's definitely in the running for best looking of all time as well. In Brotherhood of the Wolf, Franzak meets Monica in an upper class brothel. You know how strip clubs have the occasional featured guest dancer traveling around doing engagements? Monica's got that vibe. Franzak, of course, wastes no time getting with her. Even though he's simultaneously falling in love with the local lord's daughter, exhibiting very French sensibilities about men and monogamy. Monica turns out to be a lot more than a whore, though, but I won't spoil it with the specifics. I will say that it makes perfect sense why a French movie populated with French actors went out and got an Italian actress specifically for this role. Final note, Monica, never one to shy away from nudity in her roles, gets them out for this movie. Her nude scenes are definitely more tasteful and sexy rather than just blatant nudity, much to my disappointment, I will say, but obviously each viewer tastes will differ. So we just spent a while rhapsodizing about the goddess-like beauty of Miss Bellucci. It must take one hell of a man to lock someone like that down. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you that man, Vincent Cassell. Vincent Cassell met Italian actress Monica Bellucci on the set of their 1996 film, The Apartment. They married in 1999, right around the time that Brotherhood of the Wolf would have been shooting. They have two daughters. Sadly, they announced their separation in 2013. Random moviegoers, casual watchers, and people suffering from face blindness when it comes to actors may or may not recognize Cassell from Ocean's 12 and 13, where he played the Moriarty-esque international master thief, as well as the movies Black Swan, Birthday Girl, Jason Bourne, Eastern Promises, and Shrek as the voice of Monsieur Hood. The majority of Cassell's work is in French cinema, but he's done an admirable job of crossing over to American films. Notably, most of his roles rely on his presence and acting rather than having him fall back on his impressive martial arts skills. Cassell is a practitioner primarily of Wing Chun and Capoeira. Now, we briefly mentioned Capoeira in our discussion of Mark Dacascos. Vincent Cassell, in fact, lived in Rio de Janeiro for five years, and he used to have Brazilian citizenship. He's known for having a great identification with Brazil and its culture, extending to being a practitioner of the martial art of capoeira. In 2000, he was in a French movie playing a police officer alongside Jean Reno. It was called Crimson Rivers. In one fantastic scene, Vincent gets to absolutely cut loose on a room full of neo-Nazi types. It's a great scene in what's a pretty decent movie overall. It's basically a French buddy cop hunting a serial killer kind of deal. But this scene is great and pairing him up with Leon, the professional, Jean Reno, made for a really great movie. In Brotherhood of the Wolf, Vincent gets to display some of his martial arts skills. Steven Spielberg in 1975 showed everyone how it's done when it comes to suspenseful horror movies. In Jaws, the suspense is much more in what you don't see than what you do. True, this masterful technique is actually the end result of the big rubber mechanical shark not functioning properly, forcing Spielberg to hide the monster until it absolutely had to be shown. Spielberg has been quoted as saying, had the shark been working, Perhaps the film would have made half the money and been half as scary, acknowledging the ultimate technique of hiding the monster being the way to go. Another fine example of this technique in action is Ridley Scott's Alien, where you don't get a full look at the monster until the very end of the movie. This technique is still influencing modern films. John Krasinski cited Jaws as one of his primary influences in directing A Quiet Place.
This directorial technique is used to very good effect in Brotherhood of the Wolf. You have no idea what the hell the beast could be. You find yourself asking if it's some supernatural monster, but isn't this movie based at least mostly on true events? Director Christoph Gans, he does a great job in this regard. So good that you can almost forgive him for his over-reliance on slow motion. So, in summary, Brotherhood of the Wolf was a unique, suspenseful, action-packed movie that you really ought to see. It has colonial-era dudes doing kung fu, a big scary monster, Monica Bellucci's boobs. What more could you possibly ask for in a movie? And that will do it for today's video, guys. Thanks for going on this journey with us. Let us know how you liked it in the comments section. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel as we bring you more thoughtful and intriguing content in the future.